Welcome to the On The Edge podcast. I'm Stephanie Quayle, musician, songwriter, and mental health advocate. Throughout this season, I will be chronicling the behind the scenes of each song off my latest album, On The Edge. I hope each of these eight songs, these eight pieces of my heart, resonate with yours from the moment you heard them until the time you now hear the truth behind them. From betrayal to grief, to love and laughter, this story isn't just mine, it's ours. And I'm ready to take us on a journey of redemption to redefine ourselves through honest discovery. So borrow some courage until the courage becomes your own. And that's when you'll be ready to tell your truth. So buckle up, because sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. I'm Stephanie, and this is the On The Edge Podcast. I get asked all the time, how do I have so much energy? How do I do it all between the travel, early mornings, late night performances, and projects I'm working on at any given time? I'm gonna let you in on my greatest self-care secret, water. And no, not just the amount of water, it's the type of water. You've probably seen me carrying around a blue bottle. Well, enter Splendor Water. Splendor water is a volcanic water source from the Andes rainforest in La Mana, Ecuador. I've actually been to the source. I guess you could say I am source verified. What's wild about this water is that when it filters through the lava rocks of the Cotopaxi volcano, the water naturally picks up colloidal gold and silver minerals and other natural electrolytes our bodies need to stay truly hydrated. And when it comes to taste, Nothing compares to Splendor. I crave it. I didn't realize how obsessed I was with the water until I didn't have access to it. Now I check a bag just to ensure I always have it with me. So if you're ready to increase hydration and energy, Splendor is offering only to the On The Edge listeners 15% off your first order with code EDGE15. That's 15% off your first order with EDGE15. Head to SplendorWater.com forward slash edge for all your ordering needs. Hydrate your soul by elevating your hydration. Pick up your Splendor Water today by heading to SplendorWater.com forward slash edge. The ending of any relationship is hard, no matter the reason for the parting of ways. Whether it was your decision, their decision, or in my case, a forced outcome. There's an element of closure we desire to be able to move on with our lives, but many times we don't receive that full circle moment that just makes things make sense. I always thought I'd never be able to move on after the death of my ex and the lies that unfolded thereafter. I had so many more questions than I had answers about the truth of our relationship. As more things came to light, these questions took up all the brain space I had, and they kept me in the dark for a very long time because I wasn't able to get the closure that my heart and my mind so desperately was seeking. But you know what I finally, finally learned one day? And when I say finally, finally learned, you actually don't have to have closure to move on. I know, I know, hang with me, hang with me for a moment. You don't actually need closure. You need something else. What you need is healing. You need healing to move on. But this wasn't a lesson I learned until much further along in my own journey. This concept certainly wasn't something I'd come to terms with when I started wondering and wishing I could ask my ex, would you leave me questioning everything you ever said if you knew it was your last breath? Would you ask for forgiveness? Tell me the truth. Or look me in the eye, I'll love you. Would you leave me questioning? Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of On the Edge with me, Stephanie Quayle. We've come pretty far on this journey together so far, haven't we? By now you know that I'm a cowgirl and I've never met an animal that I don't like, 
let alone a tequila that I don't like. But on a heavier note, that I lost my boyfriend of four years to a tragic plane crash and found out at his memorial that I was far from the only woman in his life. This essentially makes us inner circle friends, I'd say. In the last episode, we chatted about my relationship with my late boyfriend's daughter and how much that bond means to me. It was her that finally gave me the confidence, courage, and permission to share my story openly, to set us both free of the pain we'd been holding on to. She is such a strong and resilient young woman, and I was able to borrow courage from her during this journey. What's wild to think is she's the age now that I was when I was dating her dad. So let's come back to the moment when my best friend came over to my house and told me that I wasn't the only woman in his life after his memorial service. I guess the sea of women at the memorial should have probably tipped me off that something else was going on here. But after she delivered this heart-wrenching news, in the days following, I found myself feeling every emotion. I was screaming, I was praying, I was questioning, I was thinking, how in the world could this have been true and how did this happen to me? I blamed myself for a while. I wore that shame, which we'll get into in the next episode. But it was when I started to place what was his responsibility on him, realizing it was not mine to carry, that was when I was able to feel a sense of righteous anger, justified betrayal. Because this wasn't the anger I initially felt. The initial anger threw me into a shut-off version of myself. I shut down and went more into survival mode to show everyone I'm fine and this won't take me down. It was the only way I knew how to cope initially. Put on my face and keep on going. Have you been there? You just want the pain to go away so you simply shut every emotion off just like you turn off the water faucet in your kitchen? You turn on and off your emotions. But when you limit your ability to feel the pain, you also limit your ability to feel the joy as well. Because friend, you have to feel it to be able to heal it. But it took asking these questions and realizing this wasn't my fault when I was able to get to the next step in my healing and the next step of my life. Because I realized I can move on without the closure I thought I needed. I realized healing was what I needed, not answers. And it was in that moment that the next song, Last Breath, was written in my living room in Montana with my one and only Tori Touye. Yeah, I keep finding pieces, no rhyme or reason. Screaming at the devil, praying to Jesus. Guess I'll never know, yeah, you took it to your grave if you knew it was coming. I had so many questions bubbling up in my mind, questions I knew I'd never get answers to. So I needed to figure out what to do with them. So for me, writing them into this song, it created a whole new type of healing that I was least expecting. And that's how I started to heal my relationship with these questions. My producer was drawn to the song specifically because he found it to be the most universal. We all have questions when looking back on our lives, evaluating if we're living with any regrets or what ifs, or if we'd make changes. The line, it's been months since I saw your face, always strikes me because even if your relationship doesn't end in death of a loved one like mine did, it can still sometimes feel like you are grieving as if they're gone because they are. Well, I've also learned that I'm okay with having regrets. And yes, I learned from those regrets, but I chose to stay. That's on me. And I think that what's really important is demystifying regrets and not just putting them in this pretty package because it's hard and it's heavy and it's honest. And the more honest we can be with ourselves about what we've been through and how we really feel That's where the good stuff happens. That's where the healing happens. It's not that I didn't learn immense lessons along the way, but I do have regrets and I did make mistakes and I can own that because that's the only way I can grow and truly heal. 
One of the things that was really important to me about writing and recording this album is that whoever was going to produce it, I wanted them to not know me and my music. I didn't want them to make a Stephanie Quayle, what they'd already heard, album. And the producer I went with, the amazingly talented and extremely humble Paul Moak, was the producer I chose for this project because the minute we met, there was this thing that felt like, I don't, I don't know this. This is different. This is uncomfortable. He doesn't know my work. I don't know his work. But it just felt like we had been longtime friends and this was just meant to be. And he was the only person that I felt could bring this project to life. So as we began to work together, it was easy. And when it's easy, it's right. And when it's right, it's easy. Now, Paul did come to me so generously and kindly was something he wanted to change in Last Breath. Just wanted to cut the first verse in half so we could get to the second verse faster, so that we could really draw in the listener. And this is what's so special about the songwriting process and about recording music. It's so collaborative, especially when it's right. And we were in such lockstep musically because he really wanted the songs to do the talking. I packed up your last box of clothes I made sure your mama got home Like I said earlier, in the next episode, we'll chat about how even the best of us can have the wool pulled over our eyes. But for now, if you find yourself in some situation that leaves you feeling similar feelings, Feelings of being lost, confused, and wanting more answers than maybe you'll be getting? I want to let you know that you're not alone. And I want you to borrow courage from me in this instance. Borrow courage from me in the fact that I found my closure, aka my healing, in the form of songwriting. My late boyfriend's daughter, well, she found her healing through painting. Yours might be writing, walking, talking, performing, whatever it may be. Your pain needs an outlet. You got to get it out of your body because you may not ever get the answers you're looking for, but I promise you, you can find the healing you need. And that's what you deserve to begin feeling like yourself again. So allow yourself to ask the questions, to feel the pain and find and seek out your own path of healing. This show is produced by Elizabeth Evans Media Productions. All rights reserved. Hey, y'all. If you're loving this show, it would be awesome to hear from you. Head to your podcast app, scroll down to where it says ratings and review, and share your thoughts with, well, a rating and a review. Your words might just be what the next person needs to tune in. And find the healing they're needing in their life.